Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. I'm here today with another new deck build out of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and this one is a fun one. Recently on Twitter, I shared an early build of Greasefang Okiba Boss that I'm calling Rat Gang, aka Biker Mice from Mars, aka Cheese It, it's the cops! This is a black and white vehicles deck that is also Rat Tribal. That's right, not only is our commander a perfect vehicle reanimator, but is also a rat. So what better to do than assemble the scum crawling the streets of Mukatai, hop on their bikes or mechs or flying buildings, and cause some havoc. This build first birthed itself as I was imagining these rat hoodlums stealing cars and going for joyrides, but also from the very strong interactions between Greasefang and Parhelion 2, an interaction that's even making a splash in Pioneer and Modern right now. But then the idea really took off. Imagine little rats in biker jackets jumping into dragsters and speeding off, or hijacking a train and running it off the rails, really putting a new spin on train robbery. When I put the deck together, I realized how many things I needed to cobble together for the concept to work. I needed to make sure I had enough rats, I needed enough vehicles to make use of Greasefang's ability, and I needed ways to get them into the graveyard to cheat them into play again. That's a lot of moving parts, so let's take it one piece at a time and see how I landed and where I landed. First, rats. I know I needed enough rats to ensure I could crew my vehicles, but there's an inherent issue with rats, and that is that they aren't too big. Power on rats is, on average, no greater than two. I knew I wanted to include some rats from the original Kamigawa, like Nizumi Grave Robber, Nizumi Shortfang, and Maronar, but that left me with the same problem, not very powerful. The new rats in Neon Dynasty are a little bit better. Mukutai Ambusher, Nizumi Prowler, and Nashi all have three power, which is okay, but how am I going to efficiently crew vehicles that need four power if I don't have Greasefang out? That's when I landed on Rat Colony. I faced a toss-up, Relentless Rats or Rat Colony, and the Colony won out. Not only is it cheaper at 2 mana rather than 3, but Rat Colony takes all rats into consideration, where Relentless Rats only cares about other Relentless Rats. The extra toughness wasn't a huge concern, since most of the attacking was going to be done by vehicles rather than the rats themselves, so I opted to put in a dozen Rat Colonies to make up the bulk of my biker gang. With that sorted, I needed to figure out what kind of sweet rides my rats were heisting. What kind of cars were we jacking? What kind of jets were we boosting? For the most part, I wanted to limit crew costs, ideally keeping them at a maximum of four so Greasefang could do the driving and some of the smaller rats could work together to use the wheels and pedals separately. Parhelion 2 is the dream, reanimating it with Greasefang and flying in for damage while leaving behind angels? What rat thug doesn't want to steal a cop car and go for a ride? Next, I wanted to ensure I added Sky Sovereign to the list. A flying palace, or like an international embassy, that you could skyjack. Lightning bolting on enters the battlefield and on attack is fantastic when you get two of those triggers a turn if you're reanimating it with Greasefang, a perfect way to get rid of high threat targets or blockers. Speaking of repeated removal, the new Surge Hacker mech was a must have. Imagine a rat piloting that thing. That's an amazing visual, but the fact that it's a repeatable source of removal if you're reanimating it every turn is fantastic for blasting targets and getting in some sweet damage. And putting luxury cars like Fleet Wheel Cruiser in was a necessity. It's like a smart car that drives itself. That frees up your rats to crew other vehicles for surprise attacks, and if you're reanimating it with Greasefang, allows her hefty 4 power to be used to drive something else. I rounded out the vehicles with a few new ones with some great utility. Reckoner Bankbuster to draw some cards, Imperial Recovery Unit to return some rat colonies to our hands, and Thundersteel Colossus to, well, do some serious damage. With the who and the what sorted out, I needed to figure out the how. Since Greasefang's ability reanimates vehicles, gives it haste, then returns it to your hand, it tries to circumvent you reanimating the same vehicle over and over. I needed to answer two questions. First, how are we getting vehicles into the yard? And second, how are we returning them to the yard? 
To get them into the yard in the first place, I immediately went to a few possibilities. Black is great at discarding, milling, and tutoring straight to the yard. For discarding, there's an outlet that helps our rats as well. Pack Rat. This is a discard outlet and a rat, so it's literally perfect for this deck. Even if it didn't make ever-growing copies of itself, it does everything we want it to. For milling, there's inclusions like Dark Deal, the Black Windfall. With a grip of vehicles we could dark deal, dump them all for scrap, and redraw our hand. Perfect loot for the pickings with Greasefang. And for tutoring, there are a few options, but I settled on the classic, Entomb, and the newer, Unmarked Grave. Entomb helps us live our dream by dumping an early Parhelion 2 into the yard for immediate reanimating with our commander. And Unmarked Grave, while it can't put Legendary Permanents into the yard, it can still help us get a turn 3 Aradara Express into play and kicking ass. That's great for some initial ways to get vehicles into the yard, but if we want to keep them there, we need to get tricky. Discarding them again and again had me looking for activated abilities that allowed us to discard on demand. Key to the City, Gyre Reach Sanitarium, and Mask of Memory all seem like great options to help here. In fact, we have a vehicle, good old Looter Scooter Smuggler's Copter, to help with this as well. Two whirly birds, one stone. The other option is to sacrifice the vehicles before the end of turn delayed trigger happens. Sacrificing artifacts is usually in Red's wheelhouse, so there are very few options in our black and white deck, but sacrificing creatures is solidly in our capability. Using Bone Shards or Village Rites works only if the vehicle is crewed and is a creature, but are great ways to sacrifice a vehicle in play getting it back to the graveyard. We could sacrifice crewed vehicles to High Market or Phyrexian Tower post-combat to ensure it stays in the yard too. Nice and tidy. And a perfect confluence of everything we're looking for, discarding and sacrificing, is Trading Post. It lets us discard a card from our hand to get our hot rides into the yard, lets us sacrifice an artifact to ensure uncrewed vehicles can make it into Greasefang's grips, or sacrifice a creature to get the most out of a crewed vehicle post-combat. Everything we want and versatile based on what we need. I've played this deck on stream a few times now and it is a blast! Getting to pull vehicles out of the yard and send them at opponents with rats driving them is just so much fun, and people love to get on board chanting RAT GANG RAT GANG RAT GANG when they see Greasefang do donuts in an oval chase dragster. Check out the full link in the description below and let me know what you think about Greasefang Okiba Boss and this build. What would you add or change? Let me know in the comments. And as always folks, good luck and RAT GANG!